You mentioned apartheid, and I think that's interesting. Not not too long before we started recording this, AOC and other squad members, um, I haven't checked to see if the chain's still going. It's one of those Twitter things where someone will say something and then another person quote tweets them. So AOC started it, and she um, said, this is not a, a direct quote, um, but she said, uh, apartheid is not a, a democracy, something similar to that. And so using the word apartheid, um, I found, you know, I raised my eyebrows, you know, I feel like that is pretty striking for our government, for people in our government to use that word. Um, and now Cori Bush, I saw where she did to leave. So I, I don't know on, on that front how things will go and we'll get to Biden. But what do you think about mm -hmm. the squad and, and some of the speeches that came earlier this week on the, the floor uh, with Congress members? You know, of course, I've been disappointed with anyone who doesn't have I, I think the bare minimum should be advocating for of course, the rights of Palestinians and unequivocal condemnation for Israel because of just its sheer brutality um, and the unevenness of, of the power dynamic. But I, I will say, you know, to your point about how are things changing on the ground, the fact that we have an actual sitting congresswoman who is a Palestinian. Yes. And you cannot deny her lived experience of being a Palestinian and experiencing the apartheid regime. Yeah. And that is amazing, right? Like, that's incredible that she is a representative in Congress. Someone like Ilhan Omar, who was yeah. also violently expelled from her home in Somalia because of U.S. policy and bombing. And she's a refugee and she wears hijab. And like, that's a huge thing. We've seen the absolute demonization campaign against her and Rashida. And then there's AOC, someone who has not been as straightforward as I was, I would hope her to be, but she has stepped yeah. up in recent days, um, signed on to Betty McCollum's bill, someone who has tried to pass a bill trying to condition aid to Israel for quite some time. And then finally, you saw squad members, including Ayanna Presley, who was a Warren supporter, sign on to this. I mean, Ayanna Presley actually voted to penalized BDS in the past. So I was pretty shocked and, and uh, you know, optimistic that I saw her as well as a lot of the prominent squad members signing on to Betty McCollum's bill to say we should condition aid to Israel based on, on human rights and international law. Right. Not too shocking of a concept, right? Like, right, that, that should just be, sounds pretty that normal. makes sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that seems fine. <laughs> like a good so idea. I was, I was happy because I think that, um, and of course, Bernie Sanders, you know, but but again, like even Bernie has to start the statement saying we condemn the rocket fire, you know, and, and like yeah, it's just something right. that everyone says, although Bernie mm -hmm. has, of course, been better than most. But yeah. I think anything that people are saying right now, bringing attention to this is very good. Like it, it's just really important to draw attention to this, shine a light on it. And the fact that AOC has so many tens of millions of followers yeah, and maybe a lot of just people who call themselves liberals or maybe a lot of young Zionists, you know, who, who like her mm -hmm. um, because they are liberal Zionists. And so that's why it's so important what she's doing and to continue to talk about this. And I saw, I think Ilhan Omar like did a big presentation where she was actually showing, you know, bombed neighborhoods and and bodies and you know these are the things that need to happen and so i'm i'm encouraged by that and i just hope that it will just continue to spread that fire of mass consciousness um afc also made another tweet which kind of surprised me because um she has just i have to say disappointed me on other things lately mm -hmm. but you know she may be stepping up here a little bit here um she called out biden um and Good for her. Yeah, so I don't know how, how strong it was, but it, it's a start, I think. And so let's talk about Biden. Biden, as we know, <laughs> is, um, he's, uh, he's an Israel. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. Sorry, I just yeah, threw up a little bit of my enough, mouth. Okay? That's, that's, that's <laughs> Next question. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he said some really gross things. Um, he's a huge supporter of Israel. And yeah, he, he's just, um, yeah, he gets money from Israel. Uh, and it, it's no surprise what he's doing. Maybe people thought, oh, you know, he's Am good old Amtrak Joe. He's going to have a heart. No, he still doesn't have a heart. Um, he's still siding with his buddy Netanyahu and saying, 
uh, you know, Israel has a right to defend itself, which is the old thing that what they all say. And um, Netanyahu a few hours ago said that they're going to continue until, you know, they accomplish whatever. And he thanked Biden. So oh um, my God. that was after Disgusting. Biden had, had calls with, um, you know, the, the Palestinian um, president as well as uh, Netanyahu. So they're clearly it's he's not standing up. He's, he's not going to there. There are no signs of him withholding aid from Israel at all. So, I mean, no, I mean, Biden <laughs> is certainly not going to take that approach unless he is forced to, you know, I think that and look at even what happened with the Yemen war. I mean, he's still selling weapons to the UAE and that is still the blockade is still continuing this naval blockade that essentially is the main driver of the genocide in Yemen. And that was all a fucking front. Um, I, I don't know why or how you can actually call yourself a human being <laughs> like unless he's like an alien or something like a robot i don't <laughs> understand how you can honestly having children too like I, I know that you are a mother jen and like having yeah. a child and being a mom and seeing so much horror um unleashed on the children i mean 50 percent of the yes. population of gaza is children kids right. living under the age of 18 and I, Biden is just such a monster to me. You know, the yeah. fact that 30 babies, little kids died, not just died. I'm being like AP now. They just died. Uh, they were <laughs> yeah. murdered and bombed right. and Biden couldn't even muster any sort of cri criticism of it all. In instead, he just said, um, I don't think that Israel overreacted. I don't right. think that this was an overreaction. It's like, really? 30 dead kids, Biden you fucking monster. Yeah. Um, so Biden is an unabashed Zionist. I mean, he's on camera years ago saying you don't have to be a you don't have to be Jewish to be a Zionist. It's like, yeah, clearly uh, this is not about religion. This is about an ideology of, of racist supremacism. Um, and Biden amazingly kind of sums up the entire purpose of Israel for the U.S. empire in another speech that he gave. I don't know if you saw this one. He had uh, quite a bit more hair, so I'm not sure. <laughs> Or maybe he got hair plugs. It, it almost looked like he had less hair back then, but Possible. he was younger. <laughs> but he said in this talk, he said um, this $3.8 billion aid package, he said this is just such an important investment. He was like, because Israel is so useful to the U.S. He said if Israel didn't exist, the U.S. would have to create it, would have to create Israel in the Middle East to serve her interests. Hmm. And so that really sums it up. I mean, this is such an important military proxy um, for the U.S. empire to serve as its, its battering ram in the region for whatever it wants to do to launch operations and all of this stuff. Um, and so Biden, you know, he's clearly behind that. He is clearly unaffected by the massacre of, of babies and children. Um, and it is abhorrent. It's abhorrent. And he, I mean, we already knew that he was basically like the most conservative one of the most conservative, like yeah. quote unquote, Democrats, you know, in in uh, politics. Oh, and so come I guess on, Abby, they say right? he's uh, the most progressive since FDR. Yeah, he's the second That's FDR. Who knew? <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that you know we cannot look at someone like Biden to enact change from the top down. It has to come from us, and it has to come from generating not only mass consciousness and sparking off the interest of Palestine, which is happening right now, and it's really incredible to see, but mobilizing, mobilizing together, standing in solidarity with our brothers and sisters and forming an actual um, movement, mass movement rooted in anti-imperialism that, that contextualizes Palestine liberation as fundamental to, to taking down this out of control military industrial complex, because it all fits together. And until we kind of get to that place, I fear that Israel will continue to be able to commit these kinds of crimes with complete impunity because, you know, $10 million a day to subsidize apartheid, that's a lot of money. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Um, and it has to come from us. But I, but I do, I will say that Israel is so terrified of this because they know it's coming. Um, and that I think says a lot because the fact that they've tried to criminalize uh, what they know will inevitably bring them down um, is almost a win for the Palestine movement already because, uh, you know, they know it's an inevitability.